Quad diversity, let's do it. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, we really do have a big video, and I'm really excited to bring you guys along on the ride, because we're checking out, that light behind this is so bright, we're checking out these bad boys, the Isheen 200Ds. Now, if you're in the market for some FPV goggles, there is so many out there now. We are getting some serious competition. That is fantastic. We've got Sky Zones, Fat Sharks, Onways, Falcons, these bad boys all around the $300 mark. So we're going to be finding out, are these a good pair of goggles? We're going to stick it on the bench and go through a thorough review, look at the text and the specs, take it out of the field, fly it around, show you guys my impressions, Grumpy Trevs, Crash Cal, and find out, are these pair, is this a good pair of goggles? Now, believe it or not, I've got to take my hat off to Isheen for this one. In the past, they seem to bang out some things that have some obvious flaws. You know, when I think of their latest wizard, things like the plates and then they go back. But this one right here, I can't believe it. So uh, definitely hit that thumbs up if you like what they do. Hit the thumbs up if you disagree with that. But finally, Isheen, I've got to give you guys the thumbs up because you sent out some review units first to some reviewers to get your feedback before you did your production run. So that's what I want more companies to do. So if we like something or we don't like something, say, gee, take that out, change that. That would make such a better product. I can't believe a Chinese company like Isheen, who usually makes mass produced, I guess, things with some serious flaws, they've done a fantastic thing there for the community, but sort of putting it in our hands. People like Joshua Barwell, you know, myself, Andy RC, we can really put it through its paces, find out what we like and we don't like. Now, this is gonna be a bit of a thorough review. I did see some others, but then they got taken down where someone reviewed them like for two hours before work or something like that. That's not what this is. I wanna give you guys the right information to make the right decision and also to give Isheen a chance too to go back and fix anything that, we come, that comes up in the review that we don't like. So. Strap yourself in, I've still got a cold, stick it on the bench, break it down, look at the text and the specs, then we'll take it out of the field and find out how does the quad diversity go, and is this really a new competitor on the FPV goggle market? And make sure you hit that thumbs up button or the thumbs down button if you sort of agree, maybe it'll be a way to show Isheen if we like what they're doing by sending out some early modules to some other reviewers. So, enough rambling, stick it on the bench, get started in three, two, one. Alrighty, here it is on the bench, and I've gotta say, I'm pretty excited. It's a very, very nice finish looking unit. Uh, what we should do, let's stick it on the scales, find out how much it's going to weigh and we're also going to be comparing it to things like the Omway V1s and also some Fat Sharks and find out is this going to be the right goggle for you in its current state. So let's stick it on the scales. It's coming in, I should let them tear off. It's coming in at about 285 grams and I must say it is a bigger goggle. This has, a, you know, it's got two diversity modules in there. Comparing it to the Fat Sharks which are only 225 grams and then the Omways which are super light coming in at about 180 grams. So significantly heavier on your face, especially if you're gonna be wearing this thing all day. That's one thing I do wanna mention. They are a bigger goggle and they are a little bit heavier. Now, some of the exciting things about this goggle, let's go through some of the features. First and foremost, you have these, I guess we're gonna check out the DVR of these as well, but you have quad diversity. So uh, most of our other goggles, they're just using normal diversity, so only two antennas. This, we've got two different receiver modules in here and that's gonna combine that and hopefully we're gonna get some real reception and honestly from some of the tests I've seen people do it does look like these things are performing very very well now before we dive in look at these modules let's go through some of the other features it's got a fan it doesn't need an external power jack which is something like uh, you know that I don't really like about the fat sharks so it is nice that this thing is inbuilt it's got some different buttons here for cycling through your channels your DVR you can go through change your modes like 3d mode you know set it to HDMI all that sort of stuff you can adjust with this little button right here your contrast your brightness if we flip it over underneath you can see we've got some IPD now those adjustments, they can go from 56 all the way up to 72 and uh, we will talk about that as well because getting them lining up for your eyes is different to when I'm actually looking in there and I don't know if I can see all the screens. We'll talk about that part in a little bit as well. Here, this is, I really like this, you know, so in, rather than a little button, I like you've just got a switch to turn your fan on and off. That makes it very easy for me when I'm flying to find out exactly what I need to do. Your HDMI port, your AV in, AV out, your headphones, USB, your little power adapter here and you do get a little battery with it, I should say as well. So here's your little battery and that also charges from USB, so that's a 1800 milliamp hour battery. I'm really a big fan of that. That goes at the back, so that's gonna help alleviate some of the weight when that's on your head. Simply plugs in underneath here. I feel like that's a better spot to plug it in, makes it easier to find, and also, 
This USB port right here, I love how you can power your goggles externally. If you wanted to use something else rather than a battery like this, you can power it by a USB. If we flip it open, you can see we've got a really nice big cushy face plate here that simply snaps on. You've got your DVR that goes in. I'm not really a fan of that. I would prefer the DVR to be in the top like the Omways because I feel like this can be a little bit tricky to get it out sometimes pushing it in and out of there. So I don't feel like that's the best place to be. That's the same as the Fat Sharks, but I think, yeah, your SD card is better on the top. And then we come to these screen so you can put some little dopplers in here if you need glasses and that sort of stuff but the screens themselves they're 42 degree field of view and a very very high resolution at 1280 by 720 so that is pretty crazy and should result in some really really nice video when we're flying around what i want to say too is when we flip it over let's pop the front off this and that just simply snaps off. It's gonna sound like I'm gonna break it, but it's not. There we go. And then this is where we've got our other stars of the show, these modules. So these are just some of the Esheen modules in there. But if you did wanna use your Fat Shark module, we'll take these out. And if you did want to use something like these modules, it is really, really cool. Finally, you can put your LaForge and all those other sorts of things in here and uh, sort of use your favorite modules in this pair of goggles. This is what Top Sky should have done. They've got it right, they've listened, they've made it big enough for the modules to fit in there, and I'm a really, really big fan. And on top of that, Look at this cool faceplate that you get if you're going to use some external modules because I should say some third party modules. This one just flips over the top. You can still access all your buttons, your rocker switch, all that sort of stuff and see exactly what you're doing. So I'm, I think this is going to work really, really well. But I've also heard some really cool things about these modules themselves and I've seen some videos where people are getting fantastic reception. So we're going to be testing it with these modules in here. There's something to mention as well, these diversity modules, because you're using two of them, you're gonna need four antennas, which you, you know, if you wanna get some good stuff, that might add an extra 40 bucks on there, so definitely think of that, and they're RP SMA as well. But I guess in summary, Esheen, because I know you're listening, you wanna hear what I think about this goggle, I would prefer it if the DVR was up the top somewhere. I really love this part, I think that's great, especially how it fits the Fat Shack modules, that's fantastic. I love the switch, I like your IPD adjustments, I love how the fan's built in, I like how your battery goes to the back, everything in here, I like the quality of it, it goes really, really well. But but the one part that does find me, you know, that does bug me a little bit is when I've got these on my face and I'm trying to see the whole screen, it's not like I can't get these in focus. It's like there's a bit of plastic in the way or something like maybe these front lenses aren't quite big enough to where I can see absolutely everything. It's very hard to describe, but when these are on my face, even if, you know, if I have it all the way to the left, I can see the left half and then I've got to move it all the way to the right to see the right half. They just, they don't seem big enough. Maybe these need to be a little bit bigger or there's a bit of plastic or something in the way blocking just some of your vision. And as a result, you sort of line both of these up and uh, you know your left eye is going to be fine your right eye is going to be fine but when they're both together that's the only way you can see the full image because if you're just looking through one of them I can't really see the whole image in there so that part is a little bit frustrating but everything else I think for the price the modules you get all that sort of stuff to finish on the goggle they've done a really really good job that's it on the bench that's the 200 d's from Esheen. and on first impressions i'm very impressed we'll still have to take it out of the field flying around with grumpy trev crash desk cal but when it comes to it for the money they're you know right up there it seems like with their features with things like the omways the fat sharks you know there is some real competition now and I can't believe it's coming from Esheen. So a very, very exciting time for our hobby. But enough rambling on the bench. Let's take it out of the field and find out how it goes in three, two, one. Righty, -o, out here in the field. Let's do it. We've got all our antennas on, helicals, patches, omnis, the whole works because I'm excited for the Esheen 200Ds. How does their quad diversity go? We're going to fly around the test track. I'll show you my impressions. We'll hand it over to Crash Test Cal as well, see what he thinks because they're doing some really cool stuff. And then a big one, we're going to compare it to my Onway goggles. We're going to fly the same quad, record it on the Omways with just normal diversity versus these, and uh, we'll find out are we really getting an advantage with this many antennas and diversity modules strapped to our head. So let's do it, let's have some fun and get to flying. Alrighty. Alrighty. Done. So, you know what? It wasn't too bad, I guess, changing the channels, just pressing those buttons on the top. Same as my sort of on ways. You hold the band, hold the button in to go down a band and then just tap it to cycle through the channels. But let's put it on and 16 by nine it does feel i don't think it's as comfortable as my on ways but it's definitely not terrible it sort of feels like the fat sharks big screen and i feel like you know it's straight off the bat it's a very very clear image but i don't feel like i can see the whole sort of thing i feel like it's just getting cut off a little bit so the the middle of the screen it's it's very hard to describe but yeah i can't see the whole lot with both of my eyes if that sort of makes sense and i've probably got the band a bit tight on the back of my head actually so i feel like i was getting a bit of break up out there did i get uh was my antennas pointing out that way 
it's seems fine. To by your antennas, more or less. The screens themselves, look, the screens themselves, they're very, very nice. The colors are fine. It's not, I'm not getting any ghosting or anything like that. Uh, there's no latency. The 16 by 9 is great. I guess that's probably what I prefer to fly most of the time. But what is bugging me is that reception. Is there's, it's like there's no antenna on the quad or something like that. But yeah, it is, it is breaking up when it's going out behind these bushes and it should be going a long way past that. You know, and if it wasn't for that reception, I'd be saying these are doing an absolutely stellar job. Unless, ah, oh, I know what the difference is. <laughs> okay, the last time I flew this, I was uh, doing a little bit of racing with Thomas Bitmata and we had our uh, reception turned, you know, all the way down. So uh, there we go. The milliwatts are on milli nothing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the OSD. This is probably perfect to test it on this quad as well in a rainy environment because we really want to put it through its paces and find out are we going to get an advantage. All right, so that's enough rambling about the reception. That part, you know, I was expecting a little bit better, but in terms of the screens, they look great. They, I really, it is a very, very clear image. No ghosting, nice colors. And also, I really feel like that resolution helps you see a little bit more as well. You know, it makes those ghost branches a little bit easier to spot. Anyway, what I'm gonna do, let's bring it in and then uh, we'll hand it over to Crash Test Cal, see what he thinks as well. The foam was pretty comfy. There was no light leakage either. All right, let's do it. Ready? Ready. Radio CTC, the Esheen 200Ds, a long time coming. I guess, what are your first impressions of them? With them in your hand, this is the first time you've ever seen them. What do you reckon? They feel like they're good quality. Um, they're not cheap plastics at all. It's a nice finish. They feel like a decent weight. They, they feel good quality. There's the strap, everything about it is quite good. And I would almost go as far to say as the quality's on par with Fat Shark. But uh, yeah, no, it looks very nice. What do you think about the idea of quad diversity? Look, I think it's awesome, really, because it you don't have to run it. You can just run a normal diversity on one side if you want, but it gives you that additional option, particularly if you're going long range with something, you can do that. Um, whether I would run twin diversity all the time I, I i don't think i would because i don't th i think it's a bit of overkill for what we do uh -huh. but um and i think just running one diversity module will get you better battery times better efficiency out of the goggles so you know but it's nice to have that option so i'm not taking any points off for that at all um i think that's definitely a pro that that's there for you if you want to use it would you like uh say some fat sharks and those other companies in the future to come out with you know two module bays do you think yeah. that could be somewhere we could go absolutely it's a, a common sense idea for yeah. sure let's stick them on your head see how comfy they are do you want to sit down to fly or are you going to stand up i'll sit down oh all right i'll get the radio all righty so we've straightened your antennas up how does it look it's a nice big screen so it's got a good field of view it's it's i'm not receiving any reception from the quad yet oh yeah still. i haven't plugged it in okay <laughs> hang on the picture yeah sure do how is it it's very clear can you see the whole screen maybe it was just my eyes are a bit funny is it is it just blurry or anything like that yeah there is a little blur but it, look it is a very elongated uh 16 by 9 screen so there's just a little blurring on the edges but that's not significant at all i don't think that's going to be problematic no nah. i'm used to having a little bit of blurred edges anyway with my uh hd2 so uh that's nothing to worry about for me any but, light leakage no they no. comfortable very comfortable yeah i can feel a little bit of pressure on the top of my nose like you said but uh it, I don't think it's really a problem. I think that's fine. And you wear glasses, so do you feel like it's clear in there? I only or? wear uh, reading glasses, so yep. I've got no problem focusing on this image at all. I'm getting perfect clarity. I can see everything, the OSD, everything's in perfect focus, so that's very good. All right, ready to take it up and go for a rip? Yep. Here's the radio. Reception's not too bad. Look, they're very clear image. Whether they're as clear as the HDO, mm, I'm not quite sure. The, the jury's out on that. I don't think they quite have the uh, clarity of the HDOs, but they're very close. Are they, are they as clear as your Fat Shark HD V2s? Yeah, I would say they'd be comparable. Yep. I was eager to see these uh, screens because apparently they're using a different type of technology. It's called LCOS, apparently, which is liquid crystal on silicon. So. It's not your normal LCD screen, so I was very eager to see what, how 
it would uh, contrast to what I use, which is a normal LCD. And um, look, it's quite, it's quite, quite comparable. You know, I think it's very hard to tell the difference really between this and a normal LCD, uh, but I'm getting a nice wide, good picture, but look, it'd be hard for me to say whether I'd switch over to them from my HD2s, I don't think I actually would. And why do you say that? Well, it's a six, it's a native 16 by nine screen for one instead of four by three. Yep. So look, if you can get used to that, it's not too bad. And you notice, is there any latency or ghosting or any of the, any uh, screen issues? No, everything's pretty clear. Um, I haven't had a chance obviously to play around with the contrast or the brightness and to see how rich I can get these colors, but uh, as it stands at the moment, it's not too bad, but I think I could uh, tune that up a little bit and, and get uh, even a better picture out of this. And I'm going to say, if you look at today's weather, it's not... Uh... It's not great at all. No, it's not. Our weather's terrible over here at the moment. But I'm able to fly to the end of the park without any problem. I'm not having any reception issues at all, actually. I wonder if what was going on then when I did it. I don't know. Maybe uh, I didn't have my antennas screwed on tightly. They fell off as I was waving my head around. Yeah, no, reception's not an issue, so uh, that's pretty good. And look, if you feel that you get a set of these and you feel that reception is an issue, well, you can always swap out these uh, receivers without a problem to your favourite, uh, you know, uh, True Ds or, or whatever you want. What do you think about the price around the 300 buck mark? I think it's pretty good value, actually. Um, it's uh, they're, they're a quality goggle, they're well made. Uh, Earsheen's not a small company now so they probably have halfway decent support i'm not sure about that don't quote me i have no idea but um look i i think you could do worse than having a crack at these and i gotta ask too what do you think about uh this time Esheen? they sent out some goggles to reviewers to test and then they wanted to take that back to the factory before they pumped out the production run well i think that's probably wise move really and because if there's any obvious problems um you know they can be addressed and we've seen that happen with other goggle manufacturers before and it's just been a huge waste of time and money for everyone concerned so i, I think that's probably a wise thing to do and look uh, as you can see it's we've come up or, or eashin has come up with a, a pretty reasonable product as a result and it's been like you said it's been we've been waiting for this forever and uh but look here it is and it's uh, pretty reasonable. All right, nice. So, do you, actually, do you prefer these over the? Because you you don't really like the Commander V1 too much. If you had to fly these or the V1s, what would you pick? I'd choose these. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. All right. Well, I guess what? Well, and also, what's Cal's famous four words? Um, diversity, 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 diversity. Okay, <laughs> that's one word four times, but that'll do. Yeah. No worries. Thanks, Cal. All right. Final thoughts. I think they're not quite as good as the HDOs, but they're not far off it. So you well, know, they're two hundred bucks cheaper, mate. That's my point. With you know? modules. So if, <laughs> with uh, two modules. Yeah, they're, they're offering a hell of a lot of in this package. So uh, it'd be a hard decision if you really want to go for that extra little bit of high definition. Uh, if ghost branches are concerned for you and you've got the money, well, you know, there's the fat shark option, but this is going to be very, very hard to go past. Because look, not everyone's going to have 500 bucks to spend. What about if you only had 300? What would you reckon about this being a purchase for 300 bucks? Uh, this is almost a no-brainer, really. Uh, with that twin diversity, you've got some very nice clear screens, a big field of view, which is always important for, for me. Um, this is almost a no-brainer. Yeah, this is a clear choice. You like it? Yeah. All right, that's kind of interesting of how much I love my Omway V1s and you're like, you prefer this over that. Yeah. Well, I guess competition is a good thing. Thanks, Cal. Ready to, we should do a DVR test. So uh, we'll see how they go and compare the two DVRs up. How do you think this one's going to go versus that? I have no idea. Me either. And I'm not going to know until we get home and uh, review the footage. All right, let's do that. Right. Rightio, let's do it. A little bit of a DVR test. So Cal's going to put these on. I'm going to put these on. We're going to try and sit facing the same direction, put our chairs up. We'll fly around and we'll record two DVRs, one from each goggle, then I'll line them up side by side for you guys and we'll see, are we going to be getting a bit of an advantage? And I'm going to make sure that this one isn't pointing at the ground. Don't worry, I do notice that. All right, let's do it. Let's do some DVR. Okie dokie, here we go. We're just going to jump straight into a side-by-side -side comparison. The Omways, they're on the right. 
the 200 Ds there on the left, and in my testing, I found there was no real clear winner. That that quad diversity might offer you some benefits in some other circumstances, but for most general racing, and sort of like Cal mentioned, I think it's just going to be fine with normal diversity. So yeah, both of them seem to have their times when one performed better than the other, and this was perfect conditions as well as when we should sort of test them because there was a lot of water in the air, it was raining, and we really wanted to put those antennas to the test. And on top of that note as well, I don't know how Joshua Bybel does it, you know, syncing all these things up and getting them going at the same time having the right antennas on there it is actually a lot more difficult than you'd think to compare some dvr results now, for most pilots, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference, but where it might be different is if you're in an extreme race environment and you really do some planning and you point your antennas in the right direction to get maximum coverage, or if you're going to be going for long range. But other than that, I, I think it's a cool option, but did I notice too much of a difference in my day-to-day -day flying, and especially around the UAV Futures test track? No, it kind of felt very, very compatible, uh, comparable, I should say, to the other ones out there. Alrighty, so there it is. Uh, there's my review of Eshin's FPV goggle, the Q100D, and overall, I've got to say... I'm really, really impressed the way Eshin has gone back to the drone board after the EV100s. They've come back with the 200, with the Ds, the double diversities, and like Cal said, you know, if he had to choose, he thinks this is the best $300 goggle on the market. It's definitely got some big pros, like quad diversity, beautiful screens, really high resolution, good DVR, lots of lots of pros, inbuilt fan, a whole bunch of things in this goggle that it does really, really well. But for me, I really do like the Onway V1s, and you know I am very, very partial to those, and it was quite interesting to see how much Cal compared these to the HDOs, saying they're not as clear as these, but they're getting awfully close. So overall, I think this really shows it comes down to personal preference. Definitely, they are a fantastic goggle. If you're getting into the hobby, I guess, and you can pick these up on a good price, you like the idea of quad diversity, maybe getting some better reception and really maxing out with those antennas, this is, you're definitely not going to have a bad time with these. It's just, it's running into some stiff competition as well. Things like the Onway Sky Zones, Fat Sharks, now the 200Ds, the Falcons, there's a lot of goggles around this price and it's uh, kind of, I guess, pretty exciting times for the consumer. But overall, I'm a big fan. I think they performed very, very well. No screen issues whatsoever. The only things to note, they did feel a little bit heavier than these because these are a very, very light goggle. And the other part, I couldn't really see the whole screen with both eyes. So one eye, you know, the inside seemed to be cut off just a little bit, but then the other eye overlaps that, if that sort of makes sense. It's hard to sort of explain, but it didn't really affect my flying whatsoever, but it would be nice if they could just take that out just a little bit. But what do you guys think? Drop your comments down below, subscribe for more FPV related content, and as always, happy flying. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.